guys. guys. So regulars to our channel will know that we tend to cruise a lot with MSC and Costa. A lot? I think we might have just a little bit of an addiction there. Yeah, a little. <laughs> now, that addiction does lead to people asking us all the time, how do these cruise lines compare? So we want to share with you the blow-by-blow -blow lowdown on how these two cruise lines compare. But which one gets the knockout blow? <laughs> well, you know what? You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Before we get ready to rumble, let's see how the competitors weigh in. So, what should we do? Let's roll VT! Now give me a look. have some world-class champions going head-to-head. -head. So, let's get into it. Round one, the ships. So, coming on to Costa ships, the first thing that hits you, I think, is the colour. It <laughs> is quite bright. They are bright. But do you know what? It is very Italian style, and the thing is, is that every space looks very different, which is great. It's, it's great fun to explore the ships, isn't it? And with Costa, they have different colors, textures, everything. And when you first look at it, especially in pictures, you're thinking, oh gosh, that's scarish. But to be quite honest, for some reason, and I don't know why, it all just ties in together, doesn't it? To be fair though, if you do have a migraine, probably take some glasses <laughs> with you. I mean, it is bright, it's cheerful. Uh, the ships are quite loud. Um, there is always something going on. So if you are not one of those people that like a really loud ship, um, it's maybe not the best ship for you, but you can find pockets of quiet places uh, to sit and relax as well. I think outdoor on the outdoor spaces, there's lots of nice outdoor spaces. There's swings, there's pools, um, lots of places. And at night, the ship really, really comes alive. Yeah. I mean, the outside of the ship is just so nice, so colourful. And we got some really good shots when we were walking on the deck at night. MSC, in quite contradiction to Costa, are all about the class. 
Or certainly the Sparkle. The Sparkle. Definitely the Sparkle. They are very sparkly ships. There are also very active ships. There's always something happening, always something going on. There are great hubs in the center. The atrium is always a hive of activity, as well as the Galleria for parties on the Meraviglia class. And the pool deck has always got something going on, activities to join in, so there's always something to do. You'll certainly never get bored on these ships. There is some quiet spaces, like the Sky Lounge was a, is a perfect place to go and just listen to classical music. Yeah, the Sky music Lounge is a great nice. adult-only place to go. But generally, yeah, the ships are very active. Pretty new as well. There are yeah. some older MSC ships out there, but generally they're pretty new, pretty nice, and yeah, pretty active and definitely yeah, a big European experience. Yeah. Round two, Kids Club. Kids Club on Costa. Very interesting, uh, very different from MSC. So Kids Club, has multiple different sections, like most cruise lines, but uh, because they've got more of a multilingual audience or number of children there, the, the activities are done in so many different languages. So I would say that on Costa, there was a bit more of a heavier focus on Italian yeah. speaking, actually, in the kids' yeah. club, although they will, of course, cater for lots of kids. Josh often said to us, yeah, the film they watched that night was, was Italian, Italian because 90% mm -hmm. of the kids in the group are Italian. So that is something to be prepared for. If mm. your kids are really not going to be comfortable having it in a lot of languages, but equally, they will always explain it. And they did always explain stuff to Josh or they put on the yeah. subtitles. Just Josh was lazy and didn't want to read. Yeah. And that had a lovely mascot. It was called Squawk. And for those of you who don't know what Squawk is, Squawk is a half, half dolphin, half dolphin, half man, half, half man, half, half, half man, man, half, half shark. shark. Go figure. That's more Which than a hole. Which is still so. more than a hole. Yeah. But I don't get this. <laughs> but the magic of Squawk. It is really fun. Now for teens as well, the teens have different events around the ship. Now if you've got teenage children, as we had said, the majority of the children are going to be Italian or Spanish. So they do like game shows and things. So if you do have English speaking children, there's not as many, I suppose, English speaking children on board. So they, I don't know. Now, I am obviously on this supposed to be more MSC site, but I think if you have teenagers, Costa really is a better cruise line for that. Teenagers really, they, they seem to love that teens club. It was yeah. just so free. I think it yep. really fits with what kids these days, teenagers yep. right, want to do these days. And I think it was, it definitely pips yes. uh, MSC on that for the teens anyway. However, MSC Kids Club, now, Do Re Mi Kids Club, I think, is possibly one of the best kids clubs at sea. They really cater well from drone academies to magic school to everything being such a fantastic, bright coloured, Lego themed world, world yeah. of just fun. The kids can't wait to get in there. They don't want to leave on an evening. Mm -hmm. um, they have catered so well for different age groups where they can combine the age groups as well so if you've got kids that technically split across the two groups yep. they will be able to still engage with each yeah. other and play with each other so siblings aren't separated like some cruise lines will do and I just think yeah, Do Re Mi is such a fantastic experience. It is and the kids get to do things like they get to stand up on stage and dance for families and they get I think there's a lot more family involvement with MSC not there to say is, there wasn't yeah. on Costa but there is a lot more family There's a lot more opportunities there. for you to engage with the kids as part of the club as well so mm -hmm. that's a really nice yep. touch. And the other thing is, is that their mascot is some weird, it's like this blue sunshine thing. What I is it? I think it's the points of the compass. Oh, technically. okay. <laughs> I don't know why he's called Do Re Mi, apart from it's a cool name. I suppose it's Do Re Mi. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's the points of a compass is what Do Re Mi is. Yeah. <laughs> Round three, dining. So Costa have more of a focus on main dining rooms mm. and there is quite a few main dining rooms and the good thing is though they're all different they, they all look are different absolutely beautiful they dining are. rooms yeah slightly bonkers some of them but beautiful yeah with speciality restaurants there's a couple on there but the main focus is usually uh, the the main dining rooms and that's where most people will sit um, with ourselves, we didn't table share, and this could be something that was post-pandemic, mm. but when I looked at the setup, it didn't look like it was a table sharing sort of setup on the small tables. Set up the smaller smaller tables. Yeah. There are some bigger tables, so you could table share if you want, mm. but also I'm assuming they're accommodating for larger families and things. I know we had a really quite large yeah. um, Greek family, thank yeah. God, on our cruises, so 
Yeah. Yeah. The dining times is, is an interesting one. So mm. on Costa, everything seems to be a bit later. So the dining times, their, their first dining time is actually most cruise lines late dining time. So you will find that on Costa ships, things are a little bit later than what they are on most. And their late is very late, half nine. Yeah, exactly. MSC definitely take the kind of more traditional model on uh, dining. dining. Yeah, they have a bigger, much bigger focus, a much bigger selection of speciality dining on the ships, and it tends to be the same across the whole fleet. So the restaurants do repeat. So if you've got a favourite restaurant speciality, you can always go to it. Main dining room wise, they tend to be a bit smaller. They've gone for for four or five smaller dining rooms. They do have the traditional dining times typically, so they've got an early and a late dining. One thing about MSC having more specialty uh, restaurants on board is there is a lot of upsells, so they do push you to do a lot of the specialty dining they on do. MSC. Upsell, upsell, upsell. If you want yeah. to see our upsell challenge, check out the link above. Round four food. The food on Costa. Well, I have to say, before we went on the cruise, we did not expect much because we had heard some really bad comments. Yeah, they get a really bad rap. And I have to say, I'm slightly with you on this. I think it's a bit unfair. Certainly in recent years, they yeah. seem to have really upped their game. I mean, because there's not as many speciality restaurants as well, the main dining room food, sometimes the quality was, was better than the, than most other cruise line speciality restaurants. And let's be honest, the Italians love their food. Oh, mm, there was like four courses. So they do... It not is do, definitely an event. So they are... They, they, it is. And they don't just do one big meal like you would on other cruise ships. You tend to find that they are small courses as well. So mm. when you see the first course come out, don't think that, you know, that's the main meal. There's another three to go. Exactly. <laughs> and they are spectacular. And the desserts, oh, the desserts, they do dessert so well on that cruise. So Costa have a buffet, like most cruise lines. Really? Yeah, and, well. well, We mm, have a buffet, people. Exactly. We're all good. <laughs> yes, I know, but there is one thing about the buffet as well. So it's open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, but don't expect it to be open during, um, in between those times at all. And certainly not late night. There is no late night munchies to be had unless mm. you order room service and that costs on Costa. Exactly right. Costs on Costa. Cost on Costa. Unlike Costa, the buffet on MSC is open, I think a good 23 hours a day. Yeah, I mean, if you want any food, you just, you know, especially after the theater and you got the munchies. There's always something There's Something to eat up there. <laughs> and their pizza is spectacular and their mozzarella on board is my favorite. Favorite. And they've got like a pizza ma making and a mozzarella station on board and you can watch them actually make pizzas and make the mozzarella on board in front of you. One thing for both cruise lines though, the buffets in peak hours do get very busy. They are popular. Yeah. Round five, drinks. One thing to note with Costa is that if you don't have a drinks package, nothing is included yeah not even water not even water so with the drinks packages they do have the two main ones they have is my drinks and my drinks plus mm -hmm. and as you'd expect my drinks is just basic drinks and my drinks package just includes a lot of other uh, drinks like cocktails and things like that there is other types of drinks that are on board that uh, come at an additional charge so I think they're like solid cocktails Ooh, yes. oh, and the monac um, molecular cocktails as well yeah not such a fan of those no ones. solid cocktails are good though weren't solid they? cocktails is basically alcohol jelly it's really uh, it good. so good and with the drinks I mean every bar has its own menu like most cruise ships mm. as well um, but we never found an issue with any of the drinks on board. On board MSC, if you're coming from the UK at least, you will get water, tea and coffee yeah. included as standard. However, like every other cruise line, there are also drinks packages. So you have Easy, Easy Plus and Premium Plus. I think it's Premium Plus, yeah. I'm going to go with it. Keep changing the name <laughs> of those ones. So it's getting a little bit difficult to track. But Effectively, you've got the choice the same, so they gradually add more and more in. Easy is kind of very basic, house wines, beers, etc. Then you've got cocktails, and then you've got posh cocktails. Yeah, and and some some champagnes as well. Mm -hmm. So, but I would have to say with 
MSC over the last couple of years, their drinks packages have been getting more expensive. They are. And the, the drinks themselves, or the limit on the drinks, has been getting more and more. So you find that with some of the packages, especially the easier package, it's becoming more and more limiting, and then you're having to go up to more of a premium package. It is an important thing to always bear in mind, is look at the package price and think, break it down into the per day, and think, actually, is that good value for me personally? It's a very individual thing. Yeah, that's true. Is that, or is that not? Bearing in mind that that's going to include coffees, soft drinks during the day, etc., and your alcoholic drinks. Mm -hmm. If you're not that fast, then maybe pay as you go, which is always an option on all and both cruise lines. Yeah, exactly. Round six, price. When looking at a Costa Cruise, you'll be surprised by the price because they are quite super low. To so, be fair, for the prices they charge, I'm surprised they include even food. Yeah, exactly. And the, <laughs> type, and the, and the type of food that they give. If, but, you, if you find the right time of year, you could cruise for a week for maybe £200. Yeah, that that's is so cheap. That's so cheap. And to be quite honest, the the sh what you're getting as a product is actually good value for money. That's exactly how I describe it. I don't find as much upsell and penny pinching on Costa though, which is quite strange. That's because is everything quite... is an upsell, to be fair. It, it kind of is, but it's like you have to do it before you get on the ship. And mm. that's that's the good thing about it as well. There's this pressure on board, yeah, definitely. Exactly. Lately with MSC, their prices are getting a little bit more mainstream, we'll say. Yeah. But typically and traditionally, they are the cheap one. And there are definitely some bargains out there to be had. Yeah. But again, I think they are great. They represent great value for money, especially given that they do include some basic things like water and tea and coffee. Yeah. Yeah, those basics do count a bit. And I think that does, for me personally, that tips them slightly over the edge in the price category, that they're giving you a little bit more value for money there. But equally, with the prices increasing, they're gonna need to up their service to keep it competitive. Yeah, exactly. Round seven. Languages. Guten Tag. Ciao. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, oui. <laughs> We've run out of languages, clearly. <laughs> so, as one important thing on both cruise lines yeah. here, you're going to experience at least five languages. They certainly cater for a multilingual audience. Yeah, and they do that in multiple ways. Uh, the staff, they know multiple languages. In the theatres, they speak, you know, at the start and the end, um, different languages as well. So they cater for a many wide audience of languages. One thing I would say, though, if you if English is your only language, do not fear. They will always speak English yep. and they will explain everything in your own language, which is actually, to me, a benefit. They will explain it in your home language. Tom Costa, being that it is an Italian cruise line, there is more prevalence of Italian on the cruise line. So at night, some of the things, like when you're walking around, the crew will say, Buonasera, uh, good evening. But it's really interesting to see because even though you've got French and Germans and Spanish on there, everyone just falls into line and just sort of says, Buonasera. The other funny thing that I find is that when Josh does go to kids club, uh, he'll come out of there and he'll I'll ask him what he's done and he'll be saying things in Italian. And I'm like, what? And then I realize that there is a lot of Italian being uh, spoken in there. Also English and the other language as well, because they're all multilingual staff. But that you will find that, that the main language on there is Italian, but don't fear because they speak so many different languages. Yeah, we have said before that, you know, very much Costa is kind of Italy on, on sea. sea. Yep. MSC is much more pan-European. So everything is kind of generally done in a every five languages to formally introduce things. However, I do tend to find more and more on MSC, the core language that everyone speaks because it's the common language that people have is, is English. English. Yeah. So actually, if you are really concerned about that, probably go with an MSC cruise. It is a little bit more anglicized. Yeah, but it's not to say with uh, Costa that, you know... No, you're certainly never going to feel and it alienated. Is becoming, and it is becoming more anglicized. But I think finding. it is true that they are kind of... Costa are bringing you into an Italian experience but they will cater for your language and your own needs. Yeah. But MSC is much more kind of like, here is a global European approach to cruising. Round eight, smoking. 
possibly my least favourite topic to talk about, but it does need to be discussed. Smoking on board. On Costa, the smoking policy is that you are allowed to smoke on your balcony. I cannot believe that still. I really struggle with that. And it does, to me, ruin the experience. Yeah, it was really hard because both times that we went on Costa ships, we had nice balconies that we could sit out on. And it wasn't very pleasant, especially because we were high. It wasn't very pleasant with a lot of the smoke wafting up as well. So it did did dampen the experience sometimes, when we're, especially when we're out at sea. Something I didn't notice as well, but actually there's a lot more areas for smoking on a Costa cruise as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more areas, not just one area. The after the ship, they have yeah. multiple areas, including some indoor areas for smoking as well. MSC, quite to the contrary, is a lot more restrictive in their smoking policy. There is really only one or two areas that they will allow it, and they typically are on the back and outside of the ship. And also the casinos, though. They do also allow in the casino. That seems to be quite a common thing on all cruise lines, and it's still kind of gross, but yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, one thing that we did have recently on our MSE cruise is that we had neighbours of ours who continually smoked on the balcony. And so you will find the MSE ship that people do still smoke on the balconies. I know it's not loud. Um, and at times we even got a waft of something uh, interesting, didn't More we? Wacky, yeah, shall more we wacky. More <laughs> wacky. Yeah, so, it is crazy. And you can report people on yeah. MSC for smoking on the balconies. It is very dangerous and you are not supposed to do it at all. So we did report them to guest services because that's just not acceptable yeah. behaviour. I mean, you know, if people want to smoke and stuff like that, there is designated areas um, to go and smoke. So, um, you know, just for the comfort of other passengers and of course, you know, with a child, I, I don't really want my child around it. So, yeah. Round nine, entertainment. Entertainment on Costa. So Costa has multiple uh, different venues and there is two main venues that they have on the ship. So they have the theatre. So on one of the ships it was the San Rio Remo Theatre and the other one was the Frau Pataltro. And they do a lot of dance. Uh, like I think you just massacred those names, you know. I know, but oh, yeah. I hope they have not. the theatre and they have the Colosseum. Yeah, exactly. And the nice thing is there's always something going on in one but maybe not the other, so there's always activity. Exactly, and but the main Colosseo, there is always something going on. Most of the entertainment is in English, or it's uh, acrobatics, or singing, or they've got um, Voice of the Sea there. I think Costa really tips the entertainment. Bat, entertainment oh yeah, style on this. they are fantastic. They have some really, I mean, they have some very dreamy. <laughs> and, uh, dancers oh, and performers, gosh. but also their their acts are really good. You know, they've got really great interaction from Freddie Mercury nights to oh, Michael Jackson nights Madonna. to Madonna. They're yeah. really great. Their themes are just just what you want on a Mediterranean holiday. Really, and, so and fantastic. We were like just up and dancing, and even at the pool, like they'd have like weird random parties around the pool, and next thing you know, everyone was up singing and dancing, and it was just, it was awesome. They have the favourites, they've got the yeah. white party, they've got the silent disco as well, so there's yeah. all those great things going on. And one thing though that I would say with uh, Costa though, the entertainment starts late, the ship is a night, night ship, ship, and yep. they run, like Italians do, into the early hours of the morning, it is activity, we quite often ended up just watching some of it on the TV. On TV at night. Because the ships are quite well equipped, they you can watch it on the TV channel. So yeah. we'd sit there with our cocktails in bed, <laughs> we're so middle-aged, yeah. and you know, watch watch the kind of show going on in the thing, or watch the auditions for Voice at Sea, which is just hilarious. But it was fun. Let's be honest, we all just fun. want to watch the auditions. Yeah. We don't want to see the good ones, we want to see the bad ones. Tristan! <laughs> now, MSC, on the other hand, now... Mm, Traditionally, maybe on the more weird side, let's be honest here. They're getting fed up, but the, ma the man that hatched from an egg and then laid an egg. I, I've still not quite gotten over that one. We've never seen the one that um, some other people have where they end up sniffing each other's bottoms. But like dogs. No, dog, they were like, like dogs, dogs or something. But 
I have to say though, recently and in recent years, they have kind of upped their game a bit. They've gotten a lot more into the kind of acrobatic side of yeah. things. They've got a little bit more mainstream. I know on Grandiosa, we saw some great ones on the Sea Days. We had a operetta being performed, yeah, which uh, Madame yep. Butterfly, which was great. great. Yeah, um, they've had some great singing evenings. You know, we've literally had like tears in your eyes, standing ovations. And a bit more kind of more more mainstream Broadway acts, so they are kind of going more down the mainstream route, which is kind of good to see. Yeah. But still a little bit maybe lagging behind Costa on this one. I yeah, think. on the Meraviglia class as well, you can actually pay a little bit extra and go to like a circus circus Cirque 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 esque style show, and they are brilliant. They're really really good. They are really good. Um, and I wish they had them on the other classes of ships, but obviously they don't have that space. Yeah. But amazing. Round 10, customer service. So with customer service on Costa, I'm gonna give you a little bit about the onshore experience and the ship experience. And to be fair, we're gonna do that for both, I think. Yeah, so with the ships, the ships that we went on, we went during COVID and Costa, before we got on the ship, were really great. They reassured us that there wouldn't be a problem. And when we got to the port, you know, there was a couple of issues, but we got through and it was really, really good. Yeah, lots of information, especially during the pandemic. Yep. We had to rebook the original Smeralda cruise five yep. times and they yep. were great each time at moving it, yep. adjusting it, making sure we had the right monies, transferred over any offers that they had given us for extra credit, moved yep. over as well. So really smooth and really good on the on land. Yeah service and the ship service was great we got mm. to know so they have reps as well so if for each language there is a rep and we got on well with both the english and the german rep and the second time we did go back on you know we got recognized by the german rep so people were remembering us from from our smaller cruise that it was, was a really nice one actually that you had the opportunity as well to go and meet them in yeah. a casual location not in a big grand situation but you could go meet them in a bar at a certain point when you boarded yep. um, and just have a chat to them and they would give you a little bit of detail about the shit, some hints and tips as well. Yep. It was a really nice touch actually. Yeah. It was really good customer service there. Yeah. MSC's customer service. Well, sorry, cust what, on well, shore? Well, on, on shore there's, there's not. There's none. Basically, <laughs> let's be honest. They're, they're, they're pretty bad. They get a pretty bad rep and I think it's pretty well earned by them to have a bad rep. It's really not good. You will struggle. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We have struggled with their customer service and you will. On board and on the ships, fantastic. fantastic. They are a yep. lovely crew. Absolutely can't do enough for you. We've okay. had some incidences, which you can check out in our sea view review above. However, they are really good at recovering from mm -hmm. those situations and they do really look after you and they care. Yeah. And we've had some great times, had some... Fantastic things from when we were on Grandiosa at Christmas to when we went on Grandiosa again later in the year. Yeah, you know, the crew would recognise us actually by name still. Exactly, like, yeah. it was crazy. It was six Amazing. weeks, six weeks after, and how many customers would they have seen? And then they knew they they asked us. They really got to know us. It actually, was they so even nice. remembered some of our preferences and things, yes. which is really, really great, great service. service. I was yeah. really impressed by them. Yeah. Their crew were fantastic. Final round. So Costa is pretty much Italy on sea. It's that type of experience. It's bright, it's lively, it's great value for money. The MDR food is fantastic. It really surprised us. And the entertainment is just great. There's so much of it and so much variety. Unfortunately, some of the cons I would say is that you need a drinks package because as we said before, if you don't have a drinks package, you know, you don't even have water. Uh, there's limited times for food, especially sort of in the in the buffet. So only during breakfast, lunch and dinner. And um, it's less quiet areas because it is quite a lively ship, especially at night. It's quite hard to go and find somewhere quiet unless it's in your cabin or on the top deck. Even then the balconies, you can hear the music. So yeah. it's pretty loud. MSC, it's a pan-European cruise. Yeah. It's sparkly, it's fun, it generally is pretty good value for money. 
you've got the amazing aqua parks. They oh, are, they some are of so the best. fun for both kids and adults. <laughs> and I think as well, really good speciality restaurant offerings. Some people have been known to say that they basically steal all the good ideas from other cruise lines. I actually think that's a good thing and they have done that, but it's a totally good thing. Why wouldn't you get, take the best of other cruise lines and put them into your ships? However, the negatives of MSC are definitely the customer service. Well, the on on the mate, on sh sure. onshore customer service is really bad. You also they are getting a little bit more pricey these days, which is making them kind of go into that next category above, so more mainstream, which is gonna kind of push that a bit. You've also got the main dining room food can be really hit and miss. I mean, we really don't need to talk about that. <laughs> the, the purple risotto. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. But equally, you can get some good food. Yep. But yeah, it's a definite more miss maybe than hit in the main dining room. Knockout Blue. Costa. Costa. Yeah, definitely Costa. I mean... Just, it is. I mean, MS is great. They um, are both great offerings, great. and we would definitely encourage anyone that's willing to try. If you enjoy MSC, you're going to like Costa. So for those of you who've cruised on both Costa and MSC, do you agree with our knockout blow? If you are more MSC, then make sure that you comment below. And for those of you who haven't tried either of these cruise lines, you've got to get out there and try them. That's right. We have loads of content on our channel, including specific reviews on Costa and MSC. So make sure you check out our videos and we'll see you on the next edition of Cruise Boys. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, like, comment and share.